Oh, hey there, you silly little goose. I want to talk to you in this video about traveling light, preparing yourself to be a full-time comic. When I got the opportunity to go on the road for four months straight, it was unbelievable. I was going to be working in different cities, in different states, with different headliners. I was going to be featuring for four months in a row. Here's the problem. I had an apartment. I had a brand new convertible Saab that I was making payments on. I had a really high paying corporate job with a future. I had a girlfriend, kind of a girlfriend at the time. It wasn't really solidified, but we were dating. I had to really assess where I was at. The more you accumulate in your life, the less free you're going to be. They've written numerous songs and books about this. It's not a new idea. But I want to take you through it. Me and the girl, I decided it wasn't fair to her. I couldn't have her waiting around because I, I also was unsure about the relationship. So that came to a close. She understood. It wasn't easy, but it was what it was. I had built up enough goodwill at my job because I was doing a great thing for them. I was bringing them in a lot of money and they liked me. So they gave me a leave of absence, a temporary four month leave of absence. I was able to give up the apartment and move in with my cousins, move back in there. And it was basically just a place to keep my stuff. I got rid of all my furniture because I thought if I really commit to this, these four months, I'm going to have more opportunities. And that wound up being true. I eventually traded in the Saab and got a brand new Honda Civic that was way cheaper, way more affordable. There's things that you're going to have to make decisions on. I would not recommend you just quitting your job so that you can go chase this dream. You have to set yourself up to win. I had $6,000 in a 401k. So I was able to cash that out. I took a beating in taxes and fees, but it was worth it to me. But I didn't quit my job right away. I had uh, the next year, I think, no, I don't remember. But um, after that four months, I was booked out for six months at a time. And that's when I wound up leaving my job. Look at your life. I, I firmly believe in the concept or the philosophy of leap and the net will appear, meaning make a commitment, you'll figure it out along the way. But I was 26 at the time, 25, 26. I'm 52 now. I have a house with a mortgage. I have two dogs. I can't just up and leave them. My vehicle's paid off, but I have doctor's appointments that I have to go to. It's not really feasible for me to do the same things at this age that I would have done when I was 25, 26 years old. Plan it out. Should you get the new PlayStation? Probably not. Put that money in a savings account. Should you get the latest iPhone? Well, if you're using it for your TikTok videos and it's a much better upgrade, then yeah. It's funny. Every year they come out with a new iPhone and there's certain things that are tweaked, but the commercials make it look so good that I'm always like, I got to get this one. So I started just watching the commercials again from the model that I have. I'm like, oh, I have to get this. And then I look at my hand and I'm like, oh, that's what I have. So I'm all set. Start putting money away. Start cutting back on different things in your life. There, there's sacrifices, but you're going to have to make sacrifices if you want to do this. Try to set up a network of friends across the country that you can stay with. I was in a fraternity in college and it was a national fraternity. So there were chapters all across the U S I never wound up staying at any of those places, but I had a list. I had a printout of all of them. There was no real internet back then. I had to do everything by phone. It was quite a nightmare way back in the old days, but I had places I could go. I had numbers of friends of mine who lived in all these different areas. My home club was in a day's in. It was part of the hotel. And I had built up goodwill with the people that owned that particular one. And they gave me these vouchers where I can get a hotel room for 25 bucks a night. So I use those all the time because when you're on the road, the clubs are only open 
certain nights during the week. So say I'm in Des Moines, Iowa at the Funny Bone. I don't know if it's still there, but that was the club back in the day. And I'm there Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Well, I'm doing Baton Rouge the next week at the Funny Bone there, and they're open Wednesday through Saturday. What am I going to do on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday? It seems like a lot of these clubs, they're open fewer days during the week. I used to do some rooms that were seven days a week. There was a great spot in Wildwood, New Jersey in the summer because there were tourists and just churning out audiences. Two shows a night, seven days a week. Oh, it's beautiful. It helped my act so much. But a lot of these clubs, they're like Wednesday through Saturday. I don't see as many that are Tuesday through Sunday like I used to when I did the road. And the other thing is you have to align things with your own goal. You can be successful in comedy and never leave your hometown because we have the internet. As long as you're proficient and prolific with writing, you can crank out material all the time and not be stale to the local audiences. But you have to risk something. You have to work on new material in your sets, whether it be an open mic or a regular set at a club. The best way to do that is to open with strong material that you've been doing for a long time and then work in some of the new bits, like maybe one new bit after the first five minutes and then go back to a strong bit. They call it hammocking or something like that where a hammock has the two posts and then the middle part, which can suck, will still be supported by the beginning and the end. You can blow up on TikTok or YouTube or Reels or Instagram, whatever it is now, and get to the point where you're booking your own theaters. You're finding alternative venues. Doug Stanhope did that very early on. He would find these alternative punk rock bars. He didn't have to deal with the traditional comedy club business model that most people followed. So it's a very different market now than it was when I was doing the road. The main reason why people do the road, besides the love of it and to make a living doing it, it's because they have one act. And that one act can only be done so many times for the same audience. That's why a lot of comics and performers will go to Vegas. It's all tourists. So you could do the same act for years because it's people from Germany and Iowa and um, Indiana. And I'm going to not name any other states. Comics go on the road because they don't want to burn material and they don't want to seem stale. So they go and bring their material to all these different audiences instead of having the audiences come to you. Well, now with the internet, you can bring the audiences to you and bring your material to them because it's all virtual. I'm not a big fan of Zoom shows. My buddy Quentin Davis, he had a very funny joke. He did one during the pandemic. He's like, do you know what it's like to bomb in your bedroom? Like, that's so horrifying to me that you have to throw your computer away and then hide under the covers afterwards. But yeah, there's a lot of different ways to go about this. But just remember, the more you accumulate in your life, the less freedom you're going to have. If you're focused on being a full-time comic, you're going to spend most of your time at shows or hanging out in clubs. Your friends that you grew up with, there's going to be less time for them. Your relationships with your family or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your spouse, it's going to take a hit evaluate where you are in life and really make a game plan. Talk with those people, tell them, say, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. How do you feel about it? And this is mainly for family and, you know, spouse, significant other boyfriend, girlfriend type thing. Get their feedback, see if they'll support you. Cause in a way it's kind of like going to prison, except you get to have fun and there's none of the other bad stuff that happens there. When you make a deep commitment to stand up, even if you're not traveling all the time, even if you're doing it in your home state or your hometown, realize that takes up a lot of time, especially if you're writing 10 jokes a day and making TikTok videos to promote yourself and doing social media posts. I've always thought the stage and the audience, that's my wife. That's who I'm giving so much to. So really think about how much of a commitment you can make to stand up versus how many other commitments you have out there. And I want to stress again, 
don't do anything rash. Don't just quit your job or break up with somebody because you have this dream. You'll know when you have to make a choice. You'll know when you're ready. Don't be delusional about it. You could really screw your whole fucking life up. All right? But when you do go for it, go all in. Marry it. Why don't you, you love it so much, why don't you marry it? I hope this was helpful for you. And I'm going to get to a thousand subscribers because I want to work with you directly in uh, live streams and answer your questions. Today's day 18 of making a hundred videos in a hundred days. I've done 18 days straight. I had, this is probably my 33rd video since September 19th. I hope you can see that despite everything going on in my life, I've pared things down so that I can make a commitment to this YouTube channel. I'm in a position where I have the time, I have the resources, I can take care of my dogs, I can make my mortgage payment, I can cook for myself, I don't have to be out all the time. I've cut back on my social life, which was kind of non-existent anyways. I'm a comic, I just like being around comics. I'm all in. And I didn't have to give up much. I hope you're all in too. Okay, thank you.